Hey, it's Coach Mac, playfastfootball.blogspot.com, and today we're going to talk about defending trips formations. We did, uh, did an earlier blog on, on defending the spread with quarters principles and talked a little bit about trips, but today we're going to specifically talk about <clears throat> defending trips formations with certain concepts. You know, in the offseason, I like to spend my time watching a lot of film, watching myself play, watching some of the better teams play. Uh, that played against us and see how they defend some things, but I've also been watching uh, some other high school games uh, from my state, other states, and around, and, and uh, what I've been noticing is how much trouble people have defending trips formations and trips concepts. And I think uh, one of the problems is defending trips by understanding what you're trying to take away in trips. I mean, first you have to have a base coverage concept and you have to be able to fit a trips coverage into your base coverage concepts. But at the same time, you also have to have an understanding what your base coverage concept takes away and what the team you're playing is trying to do when they're running trips. You know, usually when you watch your film or you scout an opponent, you can kind of figure out what they like to do out of their trips concepts. Some people like using the trip side, some people like using the single side, some people like using it for single side runs. So, I mean, if you do enough of, of your film study, you can kind of determine how another team likes to attack their trips formations. When defending that, I think you have to have at least two answers that will take away the things that they like to do out of trips. So what I'd like to do today is I'd like to talk about uh, just defending trips with base concepts. I'll go over three concepts today, um, ones that I like to use, but also ones that are almost generic in, uh, in, in everyday defensive football. Um, as, you know, for us, we're a 4-2-5 football team. I play with three safeties all the time. Um, I don't play with a, with a nickel outside linebacker. I play with three true safeties, so I think it gives me a couple extra advantages in coverage. First one I'm going to talk about today we call mix. All right? It's an X out concept, which means you're going to play man on one of the trip side receivers and X him out, which is going to leave you with two by one. All right? So your players can play the rest of the formation like a two by one formation. So once you X out a receiver, like we are by playing man to the number one in trips right here, once I X him out, the formation essentially becomes two by one, and now the rest of my defenders can play that formation the same way we always play two by one sets. Okay, so it's an X out concept that we call mixed coverage. We're going to play man on the number one receiver to the trip side. Again, my logic in this is if you do enough study in your film, the trips number one receiver does not get the football a lot of the time. If you're playing a team that likes to expose the number one in trips or he's their guy, then maybe you don't want to be in that concept. The other thing is I think by playing number one up hard aggressively in trips, it takes away some of the stand-up screens and some of the quick throws that, that teams may like to exploit in your trips coverage. Okay? Because we have an extra safety, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to play two read. Okay, palms, some people call it blue, but it's basically two read off of the remaining two receivers with my two safeties. Now, if you're a 4-3 team or a 3-4 team, and this is a Sam linebacker, you may not be able to do this. Because we're 4-2-5 with an extra safety, I can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play two read now on the remaining two receivers. So I'm going to be 7 by 1 outside the number 2 receiver with my left safety. I'm going to be 10 by 1 inside the number three receiver with my free safety, okay? What that allows me to do is it allows me to play the bubble of number three with better leverage, okay? Because I am outside of two and reading through number three if three bubbles, the safety can get down on the bubble with outside leverage on the player that's probably going to be assigned to block him so we can turn the bubble back inside to the mic and the free safety, all right? So the first strength is I'm going to out leverage the bubble screen. Okay, now because I am going to roll down weak, which is the next strength of the coverage, I can handle three vertical with my front side free safety. That allows me to leave my backside safety, backside corner, all right, on the single side, which allows me to firm up my weak side D gap runs while also allowing me to play two for one underneath or bracket coverage on the number one receiver, depending on what they're trying to do with their back out. I don't have to play man on the backside. Okay, because I'm going to roll down weak, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick the linebackers to the trip side and I'm going to hit this Mike linebacker. 
One of the reasons I do that is one of the weaknesses in this coverage is perimeter runs to the trip side because the left safety is not in a great position to play D-gap force. Okay? So what I can do, because I'm rolling down weak, all right, and what I mean by that is I'm probably going to play some type of cover two concept here. All right, if the ball's in the middle of the field, I'm going to roll this safety down, and then I'm going to play this corner off the weak half. If they have a back that's in position to run vertical, well, then maybe I'll play some type of palms coverage with the, with the corner and the safety on the back and the receiver, okay, to where if I can put my safety in a better situation to defend the back vertical. All right, I don't see a lot of tailback vertical out of three, out of three by one. When teams want to do that, I'll see more empty, okay, and they'll put the back in empty three by two, in which case we would just play palms coverage to that set. So if the two's in a position to go vertical, I may want to play palms on that side. But if the two's in the backfield in the pistol or if he's on the strong side, I'm going to roll this safety down and play sky coverage here, and I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to play him off the half. I can defend the hitch and the out cut and the slant cut by number one. I can defend the deep routes by number one with the corner, and now I can defend D-gap runs to the single side. Okay? So now essentially I can kick my linebackers over. The will linebacker only has to be a B-gap player if runs showing the B-gap. If this team is running strong, all right, or if the back is set strong and all their runs go to the trip side, then the will can make himself an A-gap cutback play. And then the right safety can make himself a full player in the B-gap. If you're getting weak side runs, well then now the willy can slam the B-gap with the right safety in the D-gap, and now the Mike has to be the full cutback player. If you're not comfortable with that, you may want to gap exchange your lineman to help you in the run game, all right? Gap exchange your lineman, and now you take away the A-gap and the B-gap, so on cutback, the, the Mike doesn't have to fold in as hard on the cutback. Problem with that is speed option sprint out to the front side, now you're given a little bit of a weak edge. Okay? So again, what you have to understand is what they're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish in your coverage. Okay? So now to this side, we're playing two read with man on one. The Mike now becomes the inside palms player, which means he's going to try and deny the vertical or deny number three from crossing his face. He doesn't have to deny the vertical by three because the vertical is played by the free safety. What he does want to try and deny is he wants to try and deny this three from crossing his face and he wants to make sure, okay, that the four can't out leverage him to the flat. All right? I've seen some teams that like to grab the ball and immediately throw the flare to this tailback because they have numbers on the outside. By hipping the Mike linebacker, you put him in position to not let the tailback out leverage him. So now when you get this flare action right here, the Mike's in position to play. And again, I think you can do that because of the weak side drop down. I think you can kick your linebackers that way because you're not counting on your backside safety to play, all right, number three vertical on the front side. Again, the second thing that I think it strengthens you is I think it strengthens you to empty checks. All right, so now if this team wants to put a receiver out here and empty, all right, now I can go ahead and I can play my regular two read to this side, and now I would just hit the willy a little bit, and then again, I can gap exchange quarterback runs or do something different if I needed to on that side, but it allows me to play two read. I see way too many teams in empty get beat on three vertical because their concept is using the backside safety on three vertical, and then when it comes out empty and he stays, he doesn't relate the coverage check to the front side and three runs vertical down the field. So another strength of this coverage is we're real good to empty. Okay? We're going to have a little bit of a problem with perimeter runs, so we've got to be able to handle that. All right? Going to have a little bit of a problem with spacing routes. Now, if you get good three-step teams, if they can get the one down the field and they can put two and three on the quick out, that's going to give you a little bit of an issue as well. Okay? But I think we're strong against the bubble. I think we're strong against four verticals. All right? Now, the next thing would be a stress or a solo concept, and this is probably the number one way that too high... 4-3 or 3-4 teams defend trips when they don't have the extra safety in the game. Okay, what we're talking about is playing the backside safety on three vertical. Okay, so you can keep six in the box here because you're in better position, all right, versus perimeter runs now because your outside backer or down safety here is going to play between number two and number three, all right? 
your left corner and your free safety, they're going to play normal two read rules along with this down safety who's going to play two, two read rules. So this down safety, his rules are going to be two doesn't cross my face, three doesn't out leverage me. So these three players are still playing two read. You allow your mic and your will to stay in the box where they belong, okay? So you don't have to hip and bump so the mic and the will get comfortable in their reads. The mic is just going to be a hook to curl defender, doesn't have to worry about three vertical because we're going to take the backside safety, all right? And we're going to play this backside safety in a trap or a stress concept where he is going to handle number three vertical. Okay, so your mic will be the short wall of three vertical, your, your right safety will be the long wall of three vertical. Now, the problem with that is you now have to play man on the single here, and you have to play man with the inside linebacker on any number two releases to the single side. Okay, so now you've got yourself in man here, man here, all right, and now you have to support weak side runs with the down safety or right safety, free safety, who is also responsible for three vertical to the strong side, okay? The next issue is you're out leverage to the bubble, so now if three runs the bubble, okay, now if you get three bubble, and now you get one stalk, two block here, now your free safety has to do a good job in space of turning this back to a longer run by the mic. So now you're out leverage to the bubble in three by one. So if the team's a big bubble team, Okay, then you probably don't want to play a bunch of trap or stress because you're going to get the bubble screen. All right, you're not great versus the quick game to one and two out of trips, but I think anytime you play a quarters concept, you have to understand that you're probably going to give up the flats, all right, to the field side in quarters concept. How can you take that away? All right, you can roll your corner up here and play bail. All right, you can put your corner here like you're playing mix man or cover two, and he can bail and read. Number two, as he's bailing, if two goes to the flat, he can get up there and play it. That can take away some of the pressure of the quick game just by showing a different look while playing the same coverage. But I think if you're going to play that version of coverage, you have to be willing to give up the field side flats because that's what quarters coverage does. Okay? Again, I think it strengthens you to perimeter runs now because your down safety outside linebacker is in a better position to force those perimeter runs. I think it allows your mic and your will to play the same six-man box principles they normally play, so it puts them at a little bit higher comfort level, okay? But I think the problem now is man-to-man -man on the single, man-to-man -man on the back, and D-gap weak side runs, okay? So again, if you started with your mix concept, and then you went to a stress solo trap concept, whatever you want to call it, okay? Now you've got two things that can alleviate some of the problems you can defend Perimeter runs a little bit better here, and you can defend weak side throws and runs better out of mix. So again, there's two concepts that kind of play off of one another, okay, that help you defend trips and defend the single, all right? The last one we're going to talk about today is just a roll concept, okay, just a roll 3D concept, strong side roll, which is a great concept to use because you can disguise it out of your two high coverage looks, okay? So what, what I like to do, you can also roll a corner or a safety. I'll show you both, okay? What I like to do is I like to give the mix look, all right, with my secondary. I like to give the mix look and then I'm going to roll to the trip side. So what I like to do is I like to give the, the mixed look that we normally play. All right, then what we're going to do is this left safety is now going to, he's going to be down and he's now going to be your curl flat defender. Okay? Now what you do is you slam your free safety down and he becomes your hook curl defender. Okay? Now you take the corner and bail him out to a deep third. You take the right safety and you spin him to the middle deep third, and now you take the right corner, and he plays a deep third, okay? Now, what you're going to have to do out of this concept is you're probably going to have to slide your backers a little bit to the weak side, because now what's going to happen is this Willie linebacker is going to be a flat force defender on the weak side, okay? So again, you may have to do some things, all right? You may have to run some exchanges here. Maybe you run all right, the twist exchange to cancel out the A-gap here so that your mic 
can help to the weak side B gap if your Willie is a weak side D gap player. All right, so I think you got to worry about weak side runs a little bit. I think you got to worry about weak side throws a little bit, okay, because of a deep third concept with an inside Willie linebacker that's pushed out. Now, if you're willing to give those things up, then, then that's fine, okay? But I think what you're doing now, by slamming down, all right, into a, into a three deep concept, I think what you're doing now is now you're helping defend the bubble because now you got two immediate, all right, curl flat hook curl players. You can be outside of two with leverage, all right? So now you got a player that can turn this right back to the free safety using the hook curl. I think you're helping defend the spacing concepts because now, all right, if they were to run, you know, vertical double out concepts, now you've got a curl flat player and a hook curl player that can expand on the out of number three. So I think you're helping your spacing concepts. I think you're helping the bubble. I think you're helping perimeter runs. But I think you're weakening your weak side, okay, D gap runs, all right? You can, again, you can help that by gap exchanging and bumping. But I think you're also weakening your single receiver coverage, all right? While at the same time understanding that this now becomes one high, which right away gives you the threat of four verts. Now you've got to split four verticals and understand how to defend four verticals out of a one high structure. All right, so I always try to avoid one high structures when I'm playing four wide teams because I don't want to give up four verticals. Okay, but again, it's a change up and it's something that you're disguising and it's something that you're using with your other packages. Okay, and this would just simply be called roll. Now, the other thing you could do, all right, the other thing you could do is you could roll with a corner down. All right, so what you can do is you can leave your corner there, all right, and now what you can do from here is you can roll both safeties. Now what you can do is you can leave your corner down, maybe the press funnel the one if they're a quick game team, all right, out leverage the bubble, all right. You can now take this safety and you can drop him down to be, he now becomes, all right, your hook curl defender. This now becomes your curl flat defender. And now you can spin both safeties where he now becomes your deep third and he now becomes your deep middle third, okay? So again, I think you can roll a lot of different ways. You can roll with a safety slam down. You can roll with a corner slam down. Again, I would roll based on what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to take away, but it's still a strong side three deep roll. So you're still gonna have the same strengths here, but you're gonna have the same weaknesses on the backside, okay? So again, when defending trips, I think it comes down to, number one, what are you comfortable with? Number two, what are they trying to run, okay? And most importantly for me, I think you have to be able to take away what they're gonna run, so you have to have at least one version of a coverage that balances out the other. So if you get a version of coverage like mix, where you're weak to perimeter runs, but real strong to weak side runs and weak side throws, then I think you need a version of roll or stress where you're stronger to trip side runs, but you're a little bit weaker to single side throws. Now you can go into a game plan with your defense and you can say, all right, what does this team like to do out of trips? I think we need to play more mix today. I think we need to play more roll today. Where the following week, the same, the, the, the same concepts versus a different team in three by one, well, hey, I think we need to play a bunch of roll. They don't like to go to the single and they don't run any speed option week. So I think we want to roll or trap a bunch this week and not play as much mix. All right, so now what you've got is you've got concepts built off your base defensive package, okay, that are defending what the other team is trying to run by understanding their strengths and your weaknesses, okay? One thing I don't, uh, I, you know, I, I don't suggest having new coverages to trips. I don't suggest drawing things up to trips. What I do suggest is making sure that your concepts are taught every week they're simple for your kids to play, okay? And they're things that you're gonna do every week versus trips, not something that you just draw up in the dirt. Okay, as usual, I think what you need to do is make sure your kids know your system, make sure your kids can play your system, all right? And again, the point is, we're always trying to make our kids play fast with less confusion, okay? If you don't play fast, you won't play good.